Hey there everyone, I'm Nam Pham and in this video I'll be showing you the basic beta flight setup for the Omnibus F4 V3S Plus flight controller after installing it into the GetRC Mark IV clone frame. I've already flashed this flight controller uh, to the latest version of beta flight which is as at today version 4.2.9 uh, but uh, to update the firmware, uh, it's pretty simple. Click on the update firmware button here uh, and for this flight controller, the target you can see here is the Omnibus F4SD. Now if you don't know that, it's uh, quick to check. You can go into connect to the flight controller and you can see up here that the target is Omnibus F4SD. So to flash it, just going back here, um, you select the target, you put it in here, uh, and then select the latest version, and the latest as at now is 4.2.9, and full chip erase is selected, and then click on load firmware online. So what that does is it downloads the latest firmware, or the, fir the firmware version that you selected up here, from the server, down to your machine, uh, into your computer, and then once that's done, uh, it will enable this flash firmware button and you can just click on that. And what that will do is uh, flash the latest firmware version onto your flight controller. So that will take a couple of minutes and once it's done, um, you're ready to go. So when it's finished, you can go and connect. And what I'll do now is I'll just go ahead uh, down these tabs here so we can um, yeah, just check a few things that I set up for this flight controller. So I think the first thing that you'll, it will ask you to do is actually calibrate the accelerometer. So you'll just have to click on this button here. I've already done that. Um, and that's all you need to do on this setup page, not much else. On the ports tab, we uh, soldered up the uh, receiver to the S bus pad. Uh, and that is actually the UART 6. So not much documentation online actually tells us this. So I had to try a few things like UART 1. I knew that UART 3, which uh, I think I soldered the um, smart audio for the video transmitter. Um, so I had to configure that over here for UART 3. Um, and you just have to select on VTX, TBS smart audio. And that lets you control the video transmitter settings via the um, flight controller through the through your goggles so you can see some of those settings in there update them um, and you don't have to fiddle around and click on the button the physical button on the video transmitter to change channels uh, and power and so on and whatnot so that's for your video transmitter smart audio uh, and UART 6 on serial RX which lets the receiver um, get the data to the flight controller um, and that's it you, that you need to set up on the ports. Over to configuration. Uh, so the first thing that I've done here is actually reverse the direction of the, the motors. Um, I like to fly this way so that uh, when you do get into some of the scraggle uh, or some of the leaves, it doesn't draw uh, the quadcopter into the object that you're crashing into, but rather it will push it away um, from the center of the quadcopter. Um, the problem with this is that you do get a lot of the leaves and grass and stuff that uh, get chopped up and get thrown into the flight stack um, in this direction on either side. So that's the, uh, that's the caveat that you have when you fly it with reversed motor direction, but um, sometimes I'll put some tape or something around the stack to actually protect it and uh, stop things from flying in. Um, I wouldn't want to get some dew or water getting onto the flight controller or the ESC. Uh, the next part is the uh, ESC um, setup. So over here we have the ESC motor features and um, I've got it on D-Shot 300 uh, and also I've got bi-directional D-Shot enabled. Now this does need your ESCs to be set up and flashed with uh, a firmware that actually allows for bi-directional D-Shot. So I've got BL Heli S uh, ESCs, which came with a stack, as you might have seen in the previous video, um, to 
flash the um, firmware that allows for bidirectional D-Shot, you do need a firmware uh, for the ESCs that is either Jazz Maverick, um, JESE, or a later one that is called BlueJ as well, which I haven't tried yet. Um, JESC is something that you have to pay for. Um, I think it's about 4 or $5 for a set of four ESCs to be flashed. Um, but I did get the um, free version, which is the Jazz Maverick version, um, using the BL Heli M configurator software. So I can link that in the description below for you um, and go to that, download it, and it will let you uh, install the BL Heli M um, firmware onto the ESC. So that will allow for bidirectional D Shot to work. Um, so I set the motor poles for these motors as 14, which is the number of magnets. And I think that is it. Coming down here, we do have the system configuration. I've uh, left it at 4K PID loop. I've got the accelerom accelerometer on and also the barometer as well, which it does have on this flight controller. So it tells you the altitude that you're flying. Personalization, I've just put in a craft name in there, NXP Mark IV. Camera angle, I haven't set it. Not sure if that actually makes much of a difference. You can let me know in the uh, comments below if it does, but I don't think it does much. Um, and down here for the receiver, and the receiver that I did install is the Radio Master R81. And that does um, have SBUS uh, as a protocol to communicate with the flight controller. So I did select here, serial based receiver, SBUS, and also um, yeah, selected SBUS on here as well for the serial receiver provider. Uh, coming down here to other features, I've only enabled air mode, so that allows um, authority when you're down at uh, zero throttle um, doing acrobatic moves. I've got OSD as well turned on, so you can actually see some of the information of the flight controller, uh, which we'll get to later and also dynamic filtering on as well. So we've got the notch filtering happening, which is much better for the flight performance. Down here is just more of uh, the beepers settings and everything. So the D-Shot beacon configuration allows for the motors to actually beep, similar to the tones that you hear when you first start up the flight controller stack with the ESCs. Um, it makes uh, beeping sounds so that you can find your quadcopter if you don't have a physical beeper uh, installed. So I've just turned on RX loss so if it loses reception it will um, beep and also you can set it so that you can switch things as well and make it beep. So the beep uh, configuration if you have a beeper installed and I do have one installed as well um, RX loss is what I like to have on. Uh, battery critical low uh, and also battery low. I do have those turned on and you'll see the uh, in power and battery the settings for those uh, low and also warning beeps as well on what settings I have the vol a voltage at. Uh, RX set is so that when you can actually uh, tell it to beep when you want it to and also USB so when I uh, power it up it lets it beep as well. So that's what I have set up for the configuration. In power and battery here we have I've set as the onboard ADC for the voltage meter source and that's for this stack as well and we'll, I had to play around with it to work out which one it needed. Um, it's not the ESC sensor one, it's onboard ADC for voltage and also for current as well. So it's not these other ones here. So I did test them out um, but yeah, worked out that it was just the onboard ADC. Um, minimum cell voltage, I've got it at 3.3. Um, maximum cell voltage is 4.3 and also the warning is at 3.5. Um, so that's the, the area that I kind of like to hear the beeps when it starts to reach, um, when I punch with high throttle, uh, it does draw a lot of power out of the batteries and the voltage sag then drops down to this area here of 3.3 or 3.5 and it starts to beep, but it doesn't beep continuously. Um, so that gives me an idea that I do need to land, um, but the actual battery is still at 3.7, 3.6. So we're still good to fly. It won't damage the battery. Um, and the rest I have left as the default. 
failsafe. I've left it at standard settings here. I've got it on drop and nothing else that I have changed here. Pitch tuning. So for the default, um, just for first flights and everything, I think the default PID settings are pretty good. Um, there's not much that I need to change initially until I start play playing around with it a bit and trying to work out um, uh, better PID um, settings so that we can get better performance. Um, so here I've got um, item relax on with RP axis and also uh, set point type and 15 cutoff. Anti-gravity, so I have that enabled as well. Um, and that's all for the PID profile settings. I did set my rate prof uh, profile settings as well. So here are the rate profiles that I do like. It's in beta flight type. I know that we do have actual, but uh, I haven't converted it yet. I might use one of those online converters to do that one time and uh, start using actual rates. Um, but for now, these are my beta flight rates if uh, you're interested. So on the receiver tab, and this is where um, I mentioned before that we have the SBUS um, connected. I do have it also binded as well. You can see that uh, once I move the sticks, these are still these are all working. So um, that's all set up. You notice here that we do have uh, AUX5. Um, that is the RSSI channel. So I've set it up over here, RSSI channel OX5. So that tells me when um, the receiver is actually losing a lot of reception. Um, and that's all that I've set onto this page as well. I did actually uh, actually set uh, the RC deadband to one and your deadband as one as well. Uh, just in case you see these little flutters on the your pitch or roll, um, it will it won't it kind of prevents the very very slow drift um, in its uh, motion um, when you're hovering, but um, for the most part, you won't really notice it. Um, so I've just put them in there um, just to kind of be a bit of a perfectionist so that we can, um, yeah, make sure that it doesn't float away. But yeah. Uh, in the modes tab, so here is my settings for the modes. Um, I like to have pre arm set as well. So um, yeah, that allows uh, two switches to be have to activate before it actually arms the quadcopter. That's just a safety mechanism I like to have. Uh, some people like to have just the one switch, but I just don't feel safe if I accidentally switch that and then uh, yeah, cut my fingers or, or, or damage um, things that I don't intend to. Um, yep, so that's basically it on the modes tab if you want to see. I haven't touched anything on the adjustments. I've left them as is. Nothing on servos. On the motors tab, um, there's nothing to really change or check here. Uh, if I plugged in a battery, this is the error rate on each of the motors. If I plug in a battery, it will actually go to zero because of bi-directional D-shot. So I'll do that now. And you'll see that all the error rates go to 0%, which is what we want. Now I'll unplug it. And it now thinks that I'm run out of battery. Anyway, so there you go. Um, and then onto OSD. Now on OSD, these are the settings that I like to see um, when flying. So I do have the altitude down in the bottom middle here. I do have the uh, battery average cell voltage. Um, so that's the one up here. Uh, battery current draw. So how much we're drawing at any point in time. How much we've actually drawn um, since we started flying. And I think the last one is the RSSI value. Um, that's the only other one that I like. It's in the top right just to, just to see how um, much reception from the transmitter that I have um, while flying. Uh, but I do fly in close proximity to where I am so I don't really lose that much um, signal. And of course, the warnings that come up into the middle here, I don't mind having them pop up as well, telling me what's going on. Uh, for the rest here, I haven't really played around with much for the post-flight settings. I might um, get to that later, but it's not too... The, the default's pretty good, um, I think. 
so I've left them um, and that's it for the OST settings on the video transmitter side I've uh, set up this VTX table you can download these uh, from online as well um, and uh, yeah you can uh, copy them and then load from the clipboard and it'll paste all of this information in um, so this is a easy way to switch between um, the uh, the channels so that's all set uh, for the VTX that I have here um, it's a TX805 um, video transmitter I've got it at 25 200 and 600 um, power levels so I can switch that inside the flight controller uh, through the goggles um, because I do have the smart audio set up as well so that will let me just switch between these power modes um, yep and that's all I did set up on here at the moment I am on um, this bus cam e channel 3 power is 600 by default and that's it and I think that is all that I did set so in sensors I haven't really changed anything and this is just to check out the sensors I haven't done anything with tethered logging neither did I for the black box uh, and of course CLI is where you can actually set up uh, and configure things uh, manually within the flight controller or do things like backing up the flight controller settings um, or restoring them so um, I might do that in another video later on so that's pretty much it um, so there you go um, that's all the settings I have put into um, this flight controller at this stage uh, if you have any questions yeah put it down into the comments down below and I'll try to get to them I hope this was helpful um, and uh, yeah uh, I will catch you in the next video cheers